And in response to my earlier comment about how the uh, jobs report, which is due on Friday, may be delayed by Hurricane Sandy because the required offices are closed today and possibly tomorrow. Somebody just sent in a story. Apparently, President Obama's campaign strategist, David Axelrod, has already come out and told uh, people that Romney should not expect to gain anything from a bad jobs report on Friday, which confirms it's going to be a bad jobs report, and they're already trying to basically say, ah, it's not going to have any effect on this whole situation. And now, of course, we have this story that it may simply be delayed by hurricaneish sandy and possibly until after the election is over or until the middle of the night on sunday when nobody's paying attention to that whole situation so we'll see what's uh, going on over there now i want to talk about this very bizarre story that came out over the weekend and it has to do w- uh, it began with a story regarding a, a lawsuit a massive 43 trillion dollar lawsuit against all of the u.s banks Uh, that were involved in the mortgage-backed security fraud. And we reported on this uh, middle of last week. Uh, And it was picked up and carried on a bunch of places, most notably on CNBC. Now, you probably remember the story where this nanny supposedly killed the two children in her care and then tried to kill herself by slashing her own throat. And everybody's saying, horror of horrors, and it's a terrible tragedy. Turns out, the children's father was a senior vice president and general manager of CNBC's online digital edition. And within hours of this murder of his children, uh, CNBC pulled down their copy of the story about the $43 trillion lawsuit. Now, it's still up over at the Wall Street Journal at Market Watch. So it appears that somebody thinks there's merit to the story. Uh, And it gets even weirder than this whole situation. First of all, The uh, story is being reported that uh, when the mother got home, the reason she was suspicious about what was going on is the apartment was dark. And, And so the idea is apparently, the official story is the nanny killed these two kids, then slashed her own throat, then turned out all the lights in the apartment. Now as a side note, suicide by cutting one's own throat is extremely rare. It's less than 1% of suicides, and it's primarily something men will do, especially if they have military experience and they know about uh, where the arteries and veins in the, in, in the throat happen to be. For a woman to commit suicide or attempt suicide by slashing her own throat is almost unheard of. For one thing, women tend to be very socialized to uh, value their appearance, and they tend to commit suicide with gunshot to the chest or, or other things that won't disturb their looks going on. And so there's this rush to judgment to say, oh, she was a kook, she was crazy, she was suffering from severe economic hardship, which is true of 299 million Americans right now. And of course, everybody's saying she hasn't actually been charged, police want to talk to her, and for some reason today... The doctors have decided that this nanny, who is the only surviving witness of what actually happened, must be kept in a medically induced coma. So she is sadly unable to answer any questions at all, like, hey, did you do it, and did you try and commit suicide? So this is this, there, there's just something so bogus about this whole situation. Now... Oddly enough, <clears throat> about the same time frame, and maybe the author was afraid for the lives of his children, CNBC's senior editor John Carney wrote an editorial taking the position that it doesn't really matter if there's any gold bullion at the New York Federal Reserve or if it's filled with tungsten, really, because it, it's, all, you know, it's all there on the paper, and therefore it is still there to be used in any reasonable way. And that nobody should come in for an audit, and nobody should come in with a, a hospital ultrasound, and really just it's just go on believe it's faith-based gold bullion is what it is. Go on believing that it's there. This is the senior editor John Carney over at CNBC saying you don't need to actually see the gold, and you don't need to count it and actually test it. Now, to give you the context of what a ridiculous statement that is. During the closing days of World War II, Adolf Hitler was ordering all these German armies against the Allies. The armies didn't actually exist, other than on the paper and the plans. 
For it's like, you know, the lifeboats on the Titanic, on the original blueprints, they were all really there. And so it doesn't really matter if they really exist or not, right? Just as they plow into that iceberg. So this editorial from CNBC is telling us two things. First, there's something funny going on with the gold bullion. If they're making such a ridiculous statement that you don't need to check it. And second, Wall Street understands ultimately they cannot legitimately refuse a request for an audit and purity testing from any of these sovereign nations or banks. So they're trying to come up and sell this idea that it doesn't really matter if it's a, yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually gone, but it doesn't matter because here I have this piece of paper that says it's really there, which is kind of like saying we should all believe Superman really exists because five million comic books can't be wrong. Going to take a break for commercials. A little bit more on this when we come back. Where did the gold go? We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. 